Hey guys, my name is Abby. I'm Jenny. And we want to do a little Google automated questions. We're both quadriplegics. Enjoy these automated questions. We're going to answer them to the best of our capabilities. So here we go. If you guys have seen our videos in the past, you might know that we are quadriplegics and kind of seen our abilities. The first question is, what is a quadriplegic? Do you want to explain it? Sure. A quadriplegic is someone with a cervical level injury. And so what that means is there's uh, seven cervical vertebrae and somewhere in that area, the spinal cord has been damaged. I think it's a misnomer that a quadriplegic can't use their arms. Mm -hmm. We can definitely use our arms, but put some of them, some, so like my triceps are paralyzed, our hands are paralyzed, but I'm a C5 quadriplegic. I'm a C6-7. And there are different abilities. So one of the examples we can show you is the arm. So you wanna raise your arm? Sure. So I have a tricep on my left side because I'm C7. So it's nice and high. And then I can only go like this high. Or she'll whack herself in the head. And then, yeah, if I go completely straight with my shoulder, I lose, I lose it right there. And that wasn't fake, that was real. <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear quadriplegic as tetraplegic. So that's changing in the medical field that they're using tetra more often. So you'll hear either quad or tetra now. All right, so does a quadriplegic have feeling? that's going to differ by person. Some people have feelings, some people don't. I don't have any sensation or movement from my chest down, from my level of injury. What that means is I can put something that's really hot in my lap or pick up something hot with my hands and I can burn myself without knowing that. So I do have feeling, but I can't feel temperature. I can tell you exactly what toe you're touching. That's another kind of misconception. Yes, some people can still feel, but it is different. The other, another thing is, is that even though I have no feeling and no sensation, I still have some neuropathic pain. So mm -hmm. people often ask, well, what does neuropathic pain feel like? And it's the, the tingling and burning sensation. Like if your arm falls asleep or your leg falls asleep and it starts to come awake, those pins and needles. It's the worst. It's not pleasant. And thankfully, I don't have it really bad, badly. Mm -hmm. So as long as I keep moving and keep myself busy at work with my yeah. brain engaged, I can tune it out a lot of times. Yeah. Some people's pain is very severe. Yeah. Can a quadriplegic live independently? And the answer is... Everyone is different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's different. But it is a possibility. It depends, once again, on the person's level of injury and their function. Mm -hmm. So I am at the point where I live by myself and I do have help three mornings a week just to help me with a shower and some stuff. And um, I also have help around the house. So I have someone come in and clean, do that stuff, like the floors, because if I try doing the floors, then I just roll over it and then there's mm -hmm. tire marks all over it. So some of that stuff, it's just easier for me to hire someone to do. Yeah. And how much help do you have at home? So I am on my way towards living on my own. I think I'll have a roommate, but right now at home, like I can cook, I can do my hair, I can do my makeup. Um, I need help with like changing and those part of things. But once I'm in my chair, I'm good. So it's going to be a lot of, um, there, there are going to be a lot of new variables once I'm like out of my parents' house. But um, I'm hopeful and optimistic. And yeah. Yeah. So for those of us, like both of us rely on a personal care attendant. Mm -hmm. And for any of you who are PCAs, we love you yes. because you make our life doable. So seriously. just want to give a shout out to all the PCAs out there. Yeah, seriously. And they become like family, so mm -hmm. respect. How does a quadriplegic pee? How do you pee? Everyone's different. <laughs> I personally have had a surgery, and so have you, mm -hmm. um, where we now have a hole in our belly and we can use a catheter that goes in our belly and it drains the bladder. So it's really, really convenient for people who, especially quadriplegics, but also females in general, because males have it a little bit easier. Yeah, our access is a little different. Yes. <laughs> so the Mitrofenov procedure is, I think it's a godsend. And mm -hmm. so it really changed everything for me. Prior to that, prior to having the surgery, I had a Foley catheter. 
which is an indwelling catheter. And so it just stayed in there and I had a small bag that I tucked on uh, into the side of my pants. And no one knew it was there, but it needed to be changed, it needed to be cleaned. And the Foley catheter can come out, which is not really good. Mm. And I could not change that by myself. So being completely independent um, with the bathroom is great. That allowed me to go to school full time, mm. to have a job, um, because I can do it all by myself. And I'll put a link here of where, like the kind of cap kit I use. Um, my hand dexterity is a little bit different than Jenny's. I don't really have a pinch or grasp, but this cap kit is amazing and helps me with my independence. Yeah, so there's other options for emptying the bladder. So one is called a suprapubic, and what that is, it's a catheter that's surgically implanted into the bladder, and it does need to be changed every several weeks. Foley catheter is an option. That's the indwelling catheter that stays in. Intermittent catheting, mm -hmm. um, which takes a lot of talent in my opinion and a lot of work. And then finally, um, once people have had numerous urinary tract infections, they may actually have to go to a urostomy. And to be honest, I don't know everything about that, Me either. but it's it's more of an external bag. I like the Matropa. That's my ride or die. Yeah, <laughs> literally. And I don't have, if I don't cap, we can have a stroke, so. Yeah. Exactly. Well, let's just move on into that. I don't know. What do you What do you mean? You're gonna have a stroke. <laughs> ah, my skin's getting red. I have goosebumps. What does that mean? My chest, my head hurts. Autonomic dysreflexia is your body telling you, hey, something's wrong, and you gotta figure it out. It's basically, I describe it as God's emergency backup system. Yeah. So it's telling you that something's wrong below your level of injury, mm -hmm. and typically the first two things that you check are bladder and bowel. Yes. And then after that, your butt, your feet, you just kind of try to figure out what's wrong. Yeah, make sure, nothing's, make sure nothing's pinching. Exactly. How does a quadriplegic poop? Well, it's a crappy situation. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so it's, it's typical to use a suppository. So you insert a suppository, then you have to wait for it to work. And then comes the fun part. It's called digital stimulation, and it is as miserable as it sounds. And so you take a gloved finger and you move that around in a circle. And what that does, the suppository stimulates the bowel, but the digital stimulation relaxes the anal sphincter, allowing the poop to come out. So that's something I had always needed help with. Same. Yeah. And yeah, it's a crappy situation. <laughs> um, there are other ways to manage that. A lot of people choose to have a colostomy. Um, so that's an external bag that's worn and many, many people just rave about it and they love it, say it's, it, it really changed their lives. The next time you go poop or pee, just be thankful that you can do it on your own. Yes, <laughs> literally. Good job, Jenny. Good job, good answer. She's so professional. So we're females, we're quadriplegics. We can have babies. We're can we? Can we? Can we not? Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. to have sex. Yeah, <laughs> which is possible but too. As far as females, you can still get pregnant. There, are, there's no issues with infertility unless you already were struggling with that prior mm -hmm. to your injury. Right. And so, um, I just like people to know that not only for if you're because I know you're thinking about it, because um, <laughs> people always wonder. Yeah, but. For any parents out there whose child has just had a spinal cord injury, that's something that you need to know. You yeah. know, if if your kid's having sex, they can get pregnant. So yeah, yep. <laughs> um, there are some risks associated with carrying a baby to full term while being um, with a spinal cord injury, either a quad or a para. Once again, as a quadriplegic or a higher uh, para, autonomic dysreflexia is going to be a big issue. Yeah. And then as you get bigger, you still are having to transfer. So you're carrying more weight. Um, skin breakdown can, yeah. can become an issue. Um, if you weight. grow out of your yeah. chair, you know, you you know, things happen with your body. So there are things to think about. Yeah, but it is possible. Yes. Obviously, see a doctor. <laughs> yes. Talk with them, talk through the whole process, research, like there's answers, there's other people who have done it. We haven't done it, but we know it's possible. Can a quadriplegic drive a vehicle? Yes, we both do, and it's awesome. Technology out there now is amazing. It is very safe. You don't get the equipment. You can't test out of it if it's not safe, so. Um, 
you work with like work with vocational rehab, at least that's what I did. That's what I did as well. Mm -hmm. And they'll modify everything for you. Mm -hmm. You still have to buy the vehicle, but they'll pay for the modifications as it's, long as you're on a track to get a job. So that's yeah. the motivation behind it yeah. um, and to keep a job. So I have hand controls. Um, so I steer with my right hand and do the brake and the gas with my left. And then I have a little button at my left side that I can hit for the wipers and the horn and all that mm -hmm. fancy stuff. So I do gas and brake with my left hand, but the, it's called the digitone system. And so I turn my wrist mm -hmm. left or right. And then each tone that you hear, it goes do re mi fa so. And you know, I should try out for uh, American yeah. Idol. But um, <laughs> each tone just means like wipers, blinkers, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah, so and there are fun. other hand controls that are much less fancy, so much less uh, computer. Yeah, I guess. so they're so, like manual adaptions. So yes. and ours is all mine at least is all te through technology. So but it's fine. there are manual gas and brakes that it's mm -hmm. literally just a lever, yeah. and it's, and it's much less expensive. It's much less complicated, much less to break. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone has the function to do that, that's always what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. So most of my pair of friends use manual mm -hmm. um, adaptions. I even know quads that do. Yeah. This has been awesome. Yeah. I hope we get to do this again. Yeah, thanks for watching. We hope you learned something. Spread the word. Um, if you know someone who's in chair, share the video, the channel with them. Um, and I would really recommend if you have other people that need to learn more about spinal cord injury, share the mm -hmm. video with them. I think that's really important because those of us living this world, that we get it. Mm -hmm. But those who are new may not. And then those who have friends or family who have just sustained a spinal cord mm -hmm. injury, they need to know the information as well. There's two websites you can check out. JennySmithRollsOn.com mm -hmm. That's Jenny's blog, and then mine's in waitingblog.com. And go check out the resources. Thanks. See you later!